Welcome to our first video on simple linear regression. In this video, we will discuss the two main objectives of simple linear regression and after, we will gonna run samples that will help us understand how should we interpret coefficients of a simple linear regression model. Simple linear regression or regression models in general have two main objectives. The first one is going to be established. There's a relationship between two variables. We're going to be talking about a positive relationship between two variables if they tend to move together in the sense that when one increases, the other one is increases as well. And conversely, in a negative relationship, we find that if one variable's values increase, the other variable's values tend to decrease. More specifically, we're going to be talking about statistically significant relationships between the two variables, but we will get back to this later. Let's talk about some examples and average. We expect that people or families that earn higher income will generally spend more of a given product. In this case, we're talking about a positive relationship between income and spending. We could also analyze and test if there is a relationship between wage and gender. We could ask if men are more likely to earn higher wages than women, case in which we are talking about gender discrimination, which is negative and we don't want it, but we can actually use the regression models to test if that relationship exists. Another example that I hope you find odd is relationship between a student's height and that same student's exam scores. We should expect no relationship to exist and we can use regression, regression model to test that. Our second objective is going to forecast new observation. And what we mean here is, can we use what we know about an existing relationship to forecast and observe values? Let me give you a couple of examples. For instance, if we know that our sales tend to grow over time, and we actually even know how strong this relationship is, and we know how fast our sales we grow, we could use this information to predict or to forecast what will our sales be over the next quarter also if we have data on stores and we know how profitable different stores are and we know the relationship between how much competition a store is facing in a given location or what a population of location is and how those variables impact the store's profitability, we could use what we know about previous to evaluate the profitability of a new and existing store. Of course, we don't know how profitable the new store is going to, but if we know how much competition it's going to face and we know how much people live nearby the store, then we can use this information to forecast that store's profitability. In general, we're going to talking about two different roles that variables play in regression models. The first one is going to be the dependent variables. So what is the dependent, uh, dependent variables? So this is the variable whose values want to explain or forecast and we call it dependent variable because its values depend on something else and we will be denoting it as y so the other role is that of independent variable and this is the variable that explains the other one and we say that its values are independent hence its names will denote this value as x or this variable as x
So when we use simple linear regression model, we call them linear because the magic is that we're using a linear equation. And from your high school years, you might remember one of these, where y is a function of x, and there's a term that is added to the function, another one that it multiplies the x in the stats row, we like Greek letter, and we are going to be using a slightly different notation. Our linear equation is going to have a beta zero term, which we're going to be calling the intercept or the constant. And the beta one, which is the term that multiplies to x, and we're going to be calling the coefficient of x, or the slope of x, and as a recap, we call this linear equations because this will appear as a uh, appear as a straight line if we plot them in dimensional plot. Let me show you an example of a linear equation and remember our model is y equals beta sub 0 plus beta sub 1 times x and let's simply give numbers to those betas and let's say that we have a linear equation y equals 4 plus 2x let's analyze what the 4 mean so 4 is the distance from the horizontal axis at which the line crosses the vertical axis so in this case if x had a value of 0 equals 4 and we see here that the line is crossing the vertical axis 4 units above the horizontal axis. So the slope in this case is a 2 and it means that for every unit increase of x, y will increase twice as much or 2 times as much. So we see here that x increased from 2 to 4 while y increased from 8 to 12 twice as much. So let's further understand and wonder what happens if we change the intercept. So in particular, let's use a larger intercept. Let, let's change the intercept to a 9. We see that we're moving the line upwards, meaning that we're increasing the distance from the horizontal axis to the point where the line intersects the vertical axis. We could also have a negative intercept, which would imply that the line is intersecting the vertical axis below the horizontal axis at a negative number if x were 0 here, y is minus 2. So now, now what happens if we change the slope? If we change the slope, we're changing the sensitivity of y on values of x, meaning how fast or how slow y will change when a unit of x is changed. If the slope were 5, that means for every unit of x, y is going to increase 5 times. So you see that we have a much steeper slope because y is growing much faster than it was before when we had a 2. So what would happen if we had a 0 slope? So this would mean that it doesn't matter what value x has, y will always be 4. And if you go all the way around to a negative slope, a minus 3 in this case, have we have a downward slope. And this represents that y would decrease 3 units for every unit of x. Now in this case, we're talking about very crisp and clear straight lines. But data in the real world does not behave like this. So data 
in general is going to be a series of x and y observations that on average may follow a linear pattern and that's why we use linear regression models to represent them but the line is not always and actually most generally not intersecting or passing across any of these rather there are going to be errors and that we can measure which are the distance between the dots in the real life and the actual linear regression and what the linear regression is going to do is try to draw a line that minimizes these errors but the important aspect we're going to take away now from this is that our linear regression model must include this error into it so this is how our linear regression model looks like so it is y equals beta 0 plus beta 1 times x plus the error term so let's recap y is the dependent variable whose dependence on all other parameters in the equation and then x is the independent variable that helps explains the variance in the y beta 0 is our constant term or intercept and then meanwhile bit, uh, beta 1 is the slope coefficient from the x and the epsilon which is a Greek term to symbolize something that is very very small is going to be our error term which we're trying to minimize so now let's look at an example okay our data is going to be a series of 40 observations so 40 observations of 40 different families and their weekly income and at the same time their consumption so we are given two columns so how could we use these two columns in a simple linear regression model remember our model has a dependent variable in our depend on uh, independent variable and in this case so we're trying to explain consumption based on income data so consumption is going to be your dependent variable so dependent variable that's y and then your income is your independent variable denoted as x So, and of course, our assumption here is we're making uh, and what we want to test if is income is good enough variable to explain consumption. If we throw this into a statistical package in this Microsoft Excel, so we will try to um, simply... get the regression in the data so as you can see we have data analysis here so we can easily find a lot of statistical tools here analysis tools so we could find regression so if ever in your excel you cannot find data analysis just go here in the file and then select options then add ins add ins and then you have to um, select go and then here you have to check analysis tool pack analysis tool pack bva and then solver add in and then click ok and then if you're going to go back to the data so we have here the data analysis after we will click the regression and then we will input the y range so our y range is 
from the consumption, which is our labor, up until the 40 observations, the 40 consumptions, and then our X range will be our income. Okay, so we will check this for the labels so that um, income and consumption word is included also we will have the confidence level which is the 95 percent so that means our error is um five percent and also we will click the output range which is that means output range where do you want to put your outputs so we will just want it to put it here so that it will be easily identified so we will check output range and then okay so there's nothing left okay let's click ok and then we will get this results so as you can see there are a lot of numbers but we are trying to focus here with the coefficients So we can try to change this one as consumptions. We can modify this one actually. So we're just uh, concerned with the coefficients, okay? Which is our consumption is 49.13,34137 and our income is 0 0.8527360007. Now, what do these numbers mean for our model, which try to see how did income explain consumption? So let's start with 49.14. If income with zero consumption would take this value consumption, will be 49.13. So using this, we could interpret the intercept as the consumption level of a family with zero income. Now, this makes little sense unless we assume that there is a state-grown program that offers financial aid to families with no income such that thanks to this they can have some consumption but more generally the intercept will not have an intuitive interpretation meaning that in most cases we will actually be ignoring it now let's talk about the 0.85 so this means that for every unit increase in income consumption will grow 0.85 so we can call this the marginal effect, meaning that on margin income will grow 0.85. So let's put some dollars numbers to this. Let's say your family's income is 100 more. So 100 times 0.85 means for every $100 of income, a family earns more per week. In this case, the consumption will grow on average and expected of $85 worth noting. So the slope will always have intuitive inter, uh, interpretation, which is the sensitivity of dependent variable on changes in the values of independent variables. So we will finish our example by showing the initial observations and the fitted linear model in the same plot here. So in, this, uh, in the horizontal axis is the income and a vertical axis is the consumption so the 40 red dots you see represent each of the 40 observations of the families for which we had data on income and consumption so you can notice that they follow a growing trend but there are not at all in a straight line so what we did however was draw a straight line that closest uh, resembled the pattern followed by the dots and this is the blue line so which shows the fitted values from our linear regression what our estimation procedure did was try to draw a line that minimized the error error between the red dots and the blue dots okay this is all for this video thank you for listening